Hey everyone, Tactics here with another advanced rooting guide, this time for Tazavesh Streets of Wonder. Just like with my previous videos in this series, I'll be going through this dungeon and a pretty uh, complex route, I would say, uh, explaining all the different pulls, uh, all the different uh, routing decisions we make, when to use which encrypted relic, uh, why we do that, uh, and, and various little tips and tricks for the dungeon itself and of course i'll be going through a vod just shortly here just quickly going over the mdt route first this is actually a pretty interesting dungeon as well because there's some pretty uh pretty unique woe techs i would say in this dungeon and, and the other one is the other side which of course i'll be covering uh, in in a future video so make sure you guys like this video if you enjoyed it subscribe to not miss a single other video in this series and let's just get started right off the bat here you've got this three pole uh make sure you focus down this gate warden and that'll open the door you don't need to kill these two so that's how we end up chain pulling we just focus the gate warden and then we just pull the rest into this next pack here uh, and then we have a pretty uh significant pull here as you can tell um i believe in the video it goes a little bit scuffed because uh, i accidentally pull it early uh but i'll show you how to group this up you basically los it all on top of each other and then you insta spread out and you go into the boss here and we this is a left route so one major change uh, from something like my previous Taz of S Streets video to now is that there's been like seven nerfs to this dungeon. Uh, things like damage, spell frequency, spell um, uh, being stoppable, uh, the mob health, and even like percentage changes for the dungeon, like count changes for the dungeon. And so all of a sudden the left side is a whole lot more interesting. And the big thing here actually though is if you go left, you can actually alleviate some of the RP timings. Uh, that this dungeon has and there's a lot of wasted quote-unquote rp time if you just kind of w key this dungeon and so we've come up with a strat kind of pulling together a bunch of things we've seen from groups like echo and ambition to kind of alleviate the amount of our uh, time you spent waiting for rp so that's why we go left that's a big reason why we go left now even though it has a lower target count percentage wise i believe it's a little bit higher actually and there's a few neat tricks you can do for all this trash to just make it really really easy and really safe so this becomes extremely safe and also lets you skip some rp and i'll explain that when we actually do it um, but basically we end up going we get lust timings on this boss uh get some trash done here uh, and then we move across and we do this side mail room and uh the oasis as well before going to the last boss which isn't even in this route boom and it's just error. Boom. Let's look at the VOD now because that'll give you guys a much better idea. It is. All right. So right off the top, again, make sure you are focusing down uh, this this portal, uh, Gate Warden, rather. Uh, the faster he dies, the faster you can open this door, get through it, and kind of chain. I uh, see there we kill him a little bit earlier. And we just kind of chain the rest of this pack uh, into the next pack. Uh, it does get a little bit scary, as you can see. Like, I'm holding Incarn for that absolutely gigantic pull we're going to do with Lust. Uh, so it does get a little bit scary here. Uh, and a big thing, a lot of these spells are stoppable. I think a lot of them already were stoppable. There's a couple that just now are also stoppable. A uh, big thing here is purges, though. Like, these kind of things, these weapons, are super scary for tanks. As you can see, like, I'm taking a ton of damage here. It's a little bit spooky, uh, but it's not the end of the world here. And just making sure we're also getting a stops on the important spells and just extra kicks should be thrown in things like this hyperlight bolt there, right? So this guy is going to go down and we're going to set up the pull and you're going to see the problem here uh, is that I have first technique running uh, and I accidentally target a mob in the next pack with first technique. And for those of you that aren't aware and aren't aware of the trinket is that it will pull things just by you targeting them. If I went to look and I didn't realize I had first technique running and I was still getting hit by these guides. So I accidentally pulled this pack and that kind of scuffs this as you see right there I insta pull it and so we try and uh, recover from this but basically you pull all this stuff here and you LRS right there now there's going to be a slight problem of course there's a couple of volcanics not the end of the world but you need to insta move because of these mines and because of those beams so as soon as everything groups up everyone needs to then kind of fan out and then you just kind of this so it's not the worst actually and then what we do here is we just kind of chain our aoe cc's uh, we've used leg sweep we've used lock uh stun we use cap there at the end and we've used uh, my in cap roar as well but uh yeah this would have been much smoother probably uh if i had uh not just scuffed the pull off the top here because uh, we had to wait 
pretty long time to get everything to group up. We weren't, we weren't prepared for that, basically. But it still went relatively fine. I think we had one death. Uh, so it's, it's not the end of the world. And the number one thing here is to make sure that Empowered Glyph of Restraint from this Portal Mancer does get kicked. Uh, and do note, of course, that those Rift Blasts, not Rift Blasts, the, uh, the big AoE pulse he just did, does get LOS. So that's why you're not worried about taking a ton of damage when you initiate this pull, because he'll do that cast right off the top, that pulse. Uh, and everyone is LOS, so they don't take damage. Maybe your tank isn't, but that's not the end of the world. And so we just do this right into the first boss. And honestly, lusting the first boss, you see we lost that big, big pull. We're not 100% sure where the best lust is. We're, we tested it there. Um, but because the problem with this boss is you don't get a lot of great uptime, right? Because if you try and lust on pull here, that impound contraband coming up here in eight seconds is going to kind of get two people out of that lust for a, a few seconds, right? As they kind of collect their weapons. And if you try and wait until after they collect their weapons, you of course have that interrogation and then you have the next contraband, right? So you, you never get full 40 seconds of uninterrupted DPSing uh, on this boss in particular. And so when the lust ever felt great, but I'm not sure, we're not 100% sure, especially on like a tyrannical week, right? Like obviously if you're doing this on a fortified week, I don't know if you could even do all that pull together. Probably not, um, but you'd probably want to commit lust to like a bigger trash pool as opposed to this boss. But on Tyrannical Week, obviously this boss is, is pretty long. All right, he's not terribly difficult to handle. Uh, as you can see here, like these weapons, they really don't do too much damage. Uh, the main thing you're worried about is actually the wombo combo because slowly or, or later on here, I think after the second interrogation, uh, he starts having a really kind of uh, a bad overlap uh, with the interrogation plus the uh, contraband and so you get a big tick of damage from this interrogation right and then you have the contraband big tick of damage right after you see like that and so if that boss picks someone back to back for both abilities it can be rough and i think you actually will see it coming up here uh, i think we have someone die to that uh it's a really really terrible timing there we had the rogue cloak and of course many abilities uh any immunity We'll get you out of it. Uh, no worries. Uh, stun immunity even, I believe, as well. I think Bladestorm works, for example, and Icebound. There's the interrogation again. And I believe, yeah, he'll get hit back-to-back -back here out of this. And impound and just die. Yeah, so it's, it's a very bad overlap. They're just big bursts of damage back-to-back -back if it picks the person who got chosen for the interrogation twice. Uh, so just be aware of that. As a tank, though, this boss just kind of trucks you with auto attacks, and occasionally he'll give himself that uh, that attack boost. Uh, so that's when you need to be aware of that kind of stuff. Uh, but outside of that, not really much here. Just try and move away from the swords. Not a big deal, though. They don't do too much ticking damage. Uh, and honestly, positioning-wise, you see our range are kind of underneath the boss here. So uh, it's much easier to deal with it if you're if you're in that position there. Uh, moving forward out of this boss, though. Let's go, 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 go. So we do take Woe in this next pack here, just past the boss, pulling the two packs together. Uh, and that's because we just don't want to deal with that stuff. I guess technically we could Shroud, it's not the end of the world, but you do run for a decent distance. So uh, you get not terrible Woe value from this pack. Uh, and, and we don't really get the greatest Ur value in general from this pack as well in terms of cooldown recovery. Uh, and so we just go for Woe uh, in terms of to get some speed uh, and as well as not needing to commit shroud in case we want to commit shroud later which we've been uh, kind of waffling back and forth on i'll explain that in a second so i do think we actually do this route a little bit differently um or a little bit wrong uh but we've made some adjustments and of course i have adjusted the mdt accordingly based on our timing so the big thing to look at there is that sated timing four minutes we want to lust as close to four minutes as possible you have a few minutes of leeway, of course, um, but you want to get this on CD. So tracker here, uh, of course, everyone needs to be in the circle. And, and then this beam splicer does target the gen general area of one player. It'll pick a player and shoot it in the general area of them, not necessarily directly on top of them. And so what you want to try and do is bait it back when you're the target. See here, you can see it's baited, try just beside them. And then we move forward a tad bit and then we're just outside of it. Pretty, pretty straightforward there uh and then we have the dinos and the core hounds so we pull both these core hounds on top of the triceratops three pack 
and watch here what we do. So make sure you kick these curse spells. We have four kicks, so if one, so basically never a spell should never go off. Uh, and we gate up here, and basically what this does is it's for this frenzied charge on the core hound. So if you LOS it, of course that I could pick the melee, so it doesn't matter. Uh, but basically, if it picks a melee, melee can LOS it right here, and it doesn't charge. If it targets a ranged, it just won't charge since they're standing up there. So that's kind of the uh, little cheese there. Pick the melee twice. You see he's just LOSing, and Thyhorn's pretty much doing nothing. Wild Thrash is a relatively small AoE around it, so as long as the melee aren't standing right there, uh, they won't get hit by it, so it's fine. And we're just killing these core hounds. And now you're going to see uh, our first kind of tech with uh, the RP. And that's related to this door right here. So... Uh, you, well, basically how this RP works, it's a very long RP for, for people, I mean, anyone who's done the dungeon knows you kind of have to AFK in this room forever. Uh, but basically how it works is it's split into two parts. So you need to trigger it on two separate occasions, and some people just kind of sit in there AFK, uh, the whole time. But realistically, you need to do two separate, uh, triggers of it. And you can... Find a way to trigger it. We found a way to trigger it just by kind of jumping in a spot on this door. It triggers the first set of RP. So if you'll see, we're going to send someone down. We'll pull this pack. And they're going to go into the door. And they're going to jump in the corner of the door. And the RP's been triggered. Uh, you can't see it. It's like a talking head voice. It's like a voice line. Uh, but basically, you'll get it in your chat that you've triggered it. Uh, and you've triggered the first RP. So it's RPing. It's currently RPing just by jumping on that door. Uh, some people have been blinking through that door because, of course, it is actually an empty room on the other side of that door. So you can blink twice and actually get into the boss room for anyone interested. Uh, but you don't actually need to. You don't need any blink class. You can just jump up against that door. RP is triggered. So this is where we woe, and this is where we make a bit of a mistake, I think, in terms of timings. We're almost at the point where we want to pull the boss. We have two minutes on Sated. Uh, and basically, uh, you're lusting on this boss at around 40% of the Goliath because that's when the RP for the next boss to spawn starts. So whenever the first boss gets to 40%, the RP to spawn the Goliath starts. Whenever the Goliath gets to 40%, the RP to spawn the last boss starts. That's how the menagerie works. And so you want to kind of lust when the Goliath hits around 40% so that you can kind of get him as low as possible or even kill him before the final boss spawns. So that's the reason behind that. Uh, and here's our mistake. So we opt to try and go do our little RP tech here, I think we should have done it uh, a little bit differently. So what we do here is a bunch of, as three of us go and solo the mini boss. Well, one person goes and triggers this RP and one person goes and triggers the far RP uh, in the mail room and the RP to initiate the gauntlet with this woe buff. So we split up. What I think we should have done is we should have, when we were fighting, uh, this core hound pack, right? At this, before this point, when we start pulling this pack to here, the rogue should have jumped down and triggered this RP here and then come back. And then we would have been able to trigger the second RP he, uh, once we got the wool buff here and just done the boss pretty quickly. You see here, we're just going to run through and we're going to do this. But this is pulling on our sated timer. So I think we should do this after the, the uh, Menagerie boss, in my opinion. Because you're going to see later we run into a problem with the sated timer on this key level. So just there's there's three of us here. There's no healer. We're just kind of sitting in this corner. And you can see here, range there, melee there. And uh, no problems with that debuff. Power kick doesn't move me. We're stuck with the bombs not being put anywhere near here. Very easy to deal with. You don't even need a healer. Uh, so that's how we deal with that. And at this point now, everyone's come back because the rogue has triggered the second RP uh, in the menagerie. So the menagerie is now open. And the shaman healer has triggered all the RP on the top side of the map. Uh, so now the gauntlet is open and the mail room will also be open. So uh, I think that should be done at the same time. I do think that we should have triggered the first menagerie RP a little bit earlier. So that we can just go and trigger the second RP ASAP. And then we can just fight the mailroom boss. Because again, Sated, already 30 seconds still on Sated, right? Like, Sated is going to be done by the time we get to this boss. 
which isn't the end of the world, right? It's not the end of the world. The problem is, though, with the sating timing moving into the mailroom, because, again, the mailroom is going to be the hardest boss, I think, in here uh, for sure. And so that's the boss you want to guarantee you have a bloodlust for. And if you kind of do this in the wrong order, you're going to be like four or five minutes on sated, like heading into the mailroom, which is a bit of a problem, right? Because you want to be able to lust both mailroom and, and technically last boss as well, right? Otherwise, you're scuffing a lust, but that does kind of require you to go fairly close to the total key timer. Just uh, So it's uh, not the end of the world for this key level, uh, but if we're trying to go like 26, 27, 28, it would need to be a little bit more refined. Uh, but yeah, we're just going into the boss here. Um, the only kind of important thing, uh, I would say is kind of Goliath positioning. So let's actually fast forward to when the Goliath is up. Goliath. Okay, here he is. Um, and so basically you've seen, I've seen both doors be used. Uh, I was experimenting with this door here. Uh, actually not this door. I was experimenting with this door down here. I've done this door. I actually think I prefer using this door. It actually catches all of the, uh, the venting balls. A little better i think in my opinion because you can actually pull him much deeper into the door frame um, but basically if you pull him deep enough and you don't want to do it while he's active you basically want to do it when he's almost dead for the uh the last boss is if you pull him deep enough into the door frame all the door frame will actually catch all of the balls or most of them and i haven't been able to do it well on this door frame i actually don't think i like using it this door frame this was just a test like i said i prefer doing it on that door frame Basically, you're going to see me in a second here. Actually, just fast forward to when I actually do it. So, again, Lusting at 40% on this guy, by the way. Lust is running. Try and kill him ASAP. And so, at this point, now I try and basically, like, run into the door frame and position him a little better. But, you see, this door frame is kind of shallow to begin with. But it kind of works. You see there, uh, like, about half of the balls are being caught in the door frame and just kind of chilling there. And so now you can see here is I pull gold fuse back a little bit and the person with this debuff can run in here and just kind of power pedal back and forth and pick up all the spawning bombs while still hitting the boss. And also if you want to insta stack up, you can just step onto the Goliath body and get all those orbs instantly and that instantly puts you at max stacks while you can still be power pedaling here, collecting all these bombs. So that's kind of the benefit of tanking him here or, or there. I just find uh, in this door frame, it catches one extra set of the balls. So you have less kind of running around uh, that you have to worry about. Though, realistically, I mean, this isn't really that hard to uh, to deal with uh, in general. The only other thing is, of course, those chains. Any kind of freedom effect does work to kind of get them out. We were in Tigers Lusting them. Uh, Legacy of the Sleeper, if you have it active, works for that as well. Ghost Wolf on Shamans, all those things do work. So... Uh, any kind of freedom effect will work on that as well. Uh, and that's kind of your lust timing now. So at this point, like I said, at this point, I think we would be moving forward, killing this pack and taking the woe. This, this all together here. Yeah, this would be the pull. I'm just waiting for Incarn, by the way. Pulling all this together, woeing, and then having the, uh, the rogue go and deal with the uh maze the gauntlet while the rest of us kill the mini boss up here that's what i think should have been the play at this point and that'll give us a little bit more time on our sated debuff and it'll actually pretty much exactly line up where our sated debuff wants to be for this dungeon um because you're gonna see here we're gonna have to make a call halfway through to basically abandon um the male boss uh because it is a rough boss on tyrannical so you'll see in a second here what i mean um, but basically we woed here and at this point, uh, rogue's gone. Rogue's going to do the gauntlet and we're going in here to do this stuff without the rogue. Uh, and this is where we start running into the problem because the big thing here, you want to make sure actually, oh, so first thing, sorters, make sure they don't open cages here and also make sure you don't get too close and open the cage yourself because one click on these cages and they will open and unleash the chicken. So, uh, we've definitely had that happen where we stop the sorter and someone accidentally clicks the cage. Uh, so just be aware of that. Don't be near the cages. Uh, but we do use the male elementals and their or or their um what's this? Fear orb bubble? Bubble. We'll go with bubble. Their bubble for damage on this boss. The problem, as I mentioned, is sated. We're still six minutes on sated. That's very, very high. Um so it's a it's a bad spot to be in because sated is definitely more important on this boss having bloodlust than using the two male elementals 
And so we set up the male elementals, realize we're still extremely sated, and decide to just abandon the male elementals. But basically, I'll show you what we actually do set up the whole male elemental strat, uh, and I'll show you how we do it. So basically, we AoE this down, AoE this down, stop these sorters. Uh, and then you're going to see this male elemental eventually get banished here uh, once it starts getting low. Of course, the rogue did uh, mess up a little bit. He came with a strong arm. It's not the end of the world, though. Um, so it's banished now. So it's not hitting us, and it's just kind of stuck. We can't kill it. And so he's just going to keep that banished. Uh, otherwise, by the way, if we didn't get the strong arm, we would have chained this into the next pack, by the way. Uh, but because we had that strong arm, we just had to stop and kill it real quick. And then we do this pack afterwards. Uh, and so what we're going to see here is I'm going to start knocking this male elemental to like the center of the room-ish before realizing we're sated. So basically, we would knock this guy into this like around here, and that's where we would use him uh, at the beginning. Uh, and I think this is where we call to just kill them. So basically, oh no, he he does re banish. So basically, I set him up, knock it into the center. We would use probably, I think we would banish this one, and then we would use this one and use Nox to get this one in. Now that one's at really low. And basically, we would just kill this one, right? The play is to kill this one as you're pulling the boss. So you have the haste bubble for the beginning. And then you would kill this one uh, as the first bombs are ending. So after the first set of bombs on this boss, you would kill this one to get that haste bubble when everyone has a good uptime. Uh, but yeah, we're abandoning this because we don't have bloodlust. So we're like, ah, wait, we cannot bloodlust this boss. That's more important. So we end up just killing these. Uh, unfortunate, but it's not the end of the world. And then we leave and we go and do this place. And we're like, okay, we're going to scuffle lust in any ways because of how fast we're going. So we would rather have the lust on the male boss than the last boss. The male boss is the hardest boss in here for sure. That's where you want to make sure you have literally everything. Uh, and notice that we just walked over gauntlets done, right? Rogue's done the gauntlet. So no worries there. We just walk right in. So that's a big benefit of this route is that all of this RP is already done, right? You don't have to worry about RP for the menagerie. You don't have to worry about RP for the gauntlet. Uh, the only RP you actually have to just hard sit through is the last boss. That's it. Uh, and so it's, it's pretty good. I think it eliminates it saves a ton of time i think that's one of the things that like using woe may not be optimal for damage in this case but even though you're not using it for movement you're using it to trigger rp which is like a huge time loss in this dungeon right so i think uh using the woe buffs uh in the way i described just slightly different than the way we do it uh in in this dungeon is like the way to go uh it's it's just a huge time save and notice here, though, that teleport can be stopped on this patron. So you can just use a stun or any kind of CC to prevent them from going away and just keep them stacked the whole time. Uh, but yeah, this boss is pretty, pretty easy. Um, the one thing I can show you guys real quick is refreshing your full buff. Uh, refreshing your, your haste buff on the actual boss fight. I can show you what that looks like real quick here. Because uh, I know some people have asked me about that. I'm not really sure what it looks like. Um, so basically, once he does his, uh, the, I believe it's the suppression spark. Once he does the suppression spark and starts sucking everybody in, shortly after that cast starts, the notes will start to appear. So he runs in the middle, suppression spark, and they're going to appear differently. So I'm the front one. Mine always appears directly under the boss. Um, the other three instruments will appear in like different lines going from the boss. And then the drums are obviously from the drums. So when this happens, see, there it is. It's under the boss right there. Uh, too fast. Too fast. There, you see the music note right there? It's not active yet, but it's starting to be active. There, it activates. And so I run under the boss, and I use the horn, and I refresh my buff. And meanwhile, these guys are all jumping out because their notes are in different spots at the same time. So that's how that works. Um, the other thing, though, is you can, if you have, like, a healer that wants to hit the boss in melee, like a druid or a paladin, uh, you can also drag this guy over to the drums because now, of course, one of the changes they made is drums are immune to, like, all this extra stuff. So if you ever don't want to be or want to sit AFK on the drums, uh, you can just drag this guy over to the drums and your person on the drums can still hit the boss. Uh, but now we're going back to the male boss, so... Uh, I told you about that setup we used for the uh, the pink bubbles. So normally you would do that for this boss. And then we're just going in. We're pulling. We got a strong arm by accident. We're just using it for Havoc Cleave, I believe. Because our goal here is to use 
Um, I think, yeah, we can buy by accident too. So the goal here would be to use Ur, by the way. This is another Ur tech boss where not the first fan mail, but the second fan mail, if you kill Ur for it, it is extremely powerful. Um, we get Vi because we're good. Uh, <laughs> and by good, I mean bad. Uh, so this is very annoying. But basically, not this fan mail, but the next fan mail coming up in 20 seconds, you would be able to hit Ur for, hit Ur for uh, and kill him for that fan mail, and it would be extremely powerful. Actually, maybe it was that fan mail. Basically, the second fan mail of the fight. You'd be able to kill the Ur. Uh, and heal through that fan mail with Ur. Because that fan mail absolutely trucks. Uh, and so now you're going to see, of course, this thing will be denoted by the colors on this here. See, they're blue. Blue means open. Red means closed. Yellow means it's about to open. So that's what you need to watch here. And we do have a little bit of a conga line here. Uh, and I think the monk can just do a couple on his own without being in a conga line. Otherwise, we just have the range DPS kind of stand in throwing range of the thing. And we'll throw to him. Soaking these here. Uh, and it's really just the Wombo combo of taking that ticking dot damage with this fan mail with the money order. Interesting thing about the money order is a bunch of abilities do work on it, of course. Uh, it's a physical hit, so evasion works on it. Bop works on it. Those kind of abilities. Turtle, of course. All those kinds of things. Uh, so uh, any that, that mini gets a huge amount of damage, right? Because on 24, that was in like 60% maybe of everyone's health. That's super spooky. Iga spooky. So that's... That's something you want to uh, mitigate as much of uh, as possible. Uh, meanwhile, of course, throwing these. Don't need to throw to the conga line there. We have someone else throwing to the conga line. Trying to click it in these puddles. Uh, I think I just kind of hold it. Oh, oh the, the thing changed. Uh, so do note as well. This does change after the first one. The first one uh, is very, very easy. It's it's there the whole time. But from then on, they can change near the end of the bombs. So if you're one of the later bombs, very, very spooky. Spirit Link, very, very good here as well. Just like it's a ton of damage that AoE Soak does. And back to back with all these fan mails, it's just there's so much throughput required. Uh, you really want to stagger your defensives here. It's just exceptionally scary. Uh, but yeah, this, this fight is definitely where you want to commit Bloodlust. Uh, you make sure you're committing all CDs, all pots, ASAP, and, and recommitting them as you get them. Uh, and of course, you can make the call. We were not fully confident we would kill him before the bombs went off, so we just uh, opted to uh, not. And also, yeah, if it goes in the middle of all these puddles, definitely recommend letting your tank go in there and grab it. Because uh, those puddles do tick fairly hard. They are not uh, they are not pushovers. They they tick pretty hard. And at this point, you see, we've let this entire area fill with puddles. Like, we don't care about that area at all. Uh, and at the end here, we didn't soak anything. So this, of course, filled up as well. But you can kind of pick an area. And, and we've generally decided that this area is the one to let fill up. And you kind of make sure the left side doesn't fill up. Uh, but from here... We go up to the final boss. It's just kind of boss, boss, boss here at the end of this dungeon. You do all of your trash kind of front loaded. Uh, and then we get to Soasmi, which is another boss. It's not terribly complicated. Um, it's uh, It does a decent amount of tank damage with the quick blade attack and then just from the regular autos. Um, but we basically, let's fast forward because this is the one RP you do have to sit through. Um... We had a weird bug. Is it this one we had a weird bug? I think it is. Where these just keep moving. Where this has actually never happened before. Where we get this first Shuri and none of these have stopped moving yet. Yeah, they all just keep moving. And we're just like, what is going on? And now they stop moving. It was just really weird. But overall, we just kind of call which one we're going through. And you can see here, we have a lock gate set up across quarters. Because this lock gate will go over walls. So this way you can actually get across if you ever need to. And the main thing here is we're making sure we're always in the same quadrant together. We don't want anyone to get kind of trapped off. Here the call is to go square. Just teleport once. And again, we come back and we regroup all in the same quadrant for when the division happens. And that way we know we're all always going to be together. Uh, same deal, just kind of back square here. And that's just kind of this boss fight, right? Just get what we do for the kicks. I'll show in a second here as well. He's going to divide. Accidentally teleported to the wall. I think, he, yeah, he had to cloak here because he got hit by the uh, the line when that happened. Kind of funny. Uh, where's the first kick? First kick, first kick. But basically what we do on the kicks is someone is assigned to kick first, and that's me. Uh, and the second person 
or the second kick just needs to happen at the end to kind of milk boss damage basically because the boss does nothing while the cast happens and of course the cast time is kind of based on the previous cast time right so you just want to have that first kick asap and then the second kick happens just late he really hasn't done a kick yet has he where is it it's actually really weird i actually didn't realize it was this long but yeah that's how we handle the kicks not uh it's not not super complicated you know maybe this will happen eventually i should just fast forward there it is okay okay so he teleports away and you actually see us use the lock gate here so we see oh he's over there actually that was one test step but you know what let's ignore that and i insta kick and then we just have the next kick that goes super super late and that's that's this boss and actually that's that's the dungeon as well so remember guys if you enjoyed this video if you learned something be sure to leave a like and subscribe turn on notifications so you don't miss the rest of this series hopefully it was pretty helpful to you guys if you have any questions feel free to leave them down below or you can come stop by my twitch channel of course at tactics where i stream all these keys the stream mythic rating all from a tank pov i'm um, more than happy to help answer them uh, there or down in the comments below otherwise though guys Thank you all so much for watching. Good luck with keys, and I'll see you in the next video.